Alright everyone, I'm back. I apologize for ending the other video so abruptly, but unfortunately my account still has a 15 minute limit on it and I didn't want to spend days and weeks editing that further. So, okay. I, um, I want to change a few things around in this program and really make it nicer before I, I post it as sort of a final uh, finished program for you guys, because I don't think it's fair for me to give you anything other than the highest standard of work. So if you look at this uh, output that we have so far, we have um, 9 is not even, which is correct. It's not. But 9 is undoubtedly uh, a, a perfect square. Um, you know, if you take the square root of it, it should be 3. And so you'll see why that is when you look at this code. If you do the square root of 9, you're going to end up with 3. And the reason why it's saying it's not a perfect square is because I'm checking for 0. And so what I should instead be checking for is I should be checking to see if the square root of choice mod 1 is equal to 0. Because if it's not a whole number, then the square root clearly didn't go in perfectly. I mean, if we take 9.5 and, and mod it, that's going to give us a very di er, and uh, take the square root of it, that's going to give us a very different outcome than if we, you know, take the square root of 9. Um, it would probably be a really ugly, maybe irrational number. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to take one more set of parentheses. I know, I'm, I really get kind of crazy with these parentheses. And then we'll say, mod 1 and put another parenthesis around that. And so I believe that should solve the problem. But see, when we get into uh, other things, I, I want to show you that this should be right now. Um, so yeah, it is a perfect square. It is a whole number. Um, we'll try another one. We'll just see 16. Um, because 16 should be a perfect square. Yeah, okay. It is a whole number. It is even it is even prior to the decimal point. So, okay. What I wanted to uh, to show you guys is that you see how we have this, the number 16 is even prior to the decimal point. That's fine. But when we say, like, 16 squared is even, you know, in, in your mind, do you know off the top of your head what 16 squared is? I mean, a lot of people who are in computer programming can just snap and go, oh yeah, it's 256, because we kind of deal in 16s with hexadecimal. But not everybody has that ability. So why don't we add that to our output as well? So in this case, our, our square root is there. So we're saying the number choice is uh, or is not a perfect square. And so how about instead, after this, we show what the outcome was from that squaring operation. We'll do math.sqrt of choice, and we'll show, you know, why it did or did not work. And don't worry about that. It tries to be helpful and fill in things for you, and it gives them a funny highlight color. Um, so again, we'll kind of do the same thing here. And we'll kind of come down, and after the quotation mark, you simply add a plus. And when you add a plus, that means that you're going to be adding something else. You can add in, uh, as I've done with choice here, you can add in another set of quotation marks and start writing again after you, you know, output a variable. So, all right, that's going to be our square root. Now, with our uh, power, what we're going to do is simply come here and do uh, raise to a power of 2. So we'll do like that. And then just copy paste it here. So now when we give our program a run, we'll do 9. And you'll see that it's not even. It is a perfect square, and the square is 3.0. That 9 is a whole number, 
and that 9 squared is not even, and the outcome of it is 81. So I think that when we add in that, you know, and show what the outcome actually is, it becomes a lot easier to debug. I mean, let's assume that, you know, if 9 squared was 82 and it said it's not even, we see 82, then we would know, you know, okay, there's a problem because I can see that that's not even. And it gives us a way to go back and double check our, our work. And it gives us a way to really visualize what we're working with here. Now, these two outputs right here of two spaces, so I'm just going to make that uniform with the rest of it. But this right here is, is a, a simple if-else structure that just sort of shows you, you know, is this going to be a, a, a thing that is or is not um, certain mathematical functions. And you can get into the more advanced math functions of Java. There, I mean, the, the uh, math library in Java is very, very prolific. There is a lot of stuff in it that you can work with. Um, some people might want to get into logarithmic functions, and there is support for that. Um, if you guys would like to know more about that sort of thing, I can definitely get into that later on in the series. But for now, I'm trying to keep things accessible to everybody because if I start getting into truly advanced math, then, you know, it might not be as accessible to people who aren't terrific at math. So for now, I just wanted to wrap this up because that, that last, the ending of the last video was real, it was way too brief. I'm sorry that I had to end it that way. I saw I was at 897 seconds, and, you know, I've got a 900 second limit, so I'll try not to do that again. I'll try to manage my time a little bit better. Um, as I'm sure you can tell, last video was kind of going off the cuff, and I didn't really plan out my, uh, my math include properly because I included the wrong thing. But in the future, I'll try to, you know, take steps to make sure that doesn't happen. I don't want to waste all your time. So... I'm going to post this up online. Um, next video we're going to be talking a little bit more about the logic of this and how we can use uh, a system of flags to do things for us. And we'll see why that's more useful uh, after lesson nine. Because when I first introduced the concept of flags, which are really booleans, um, it's not going to make sense in that you're going to say, well, that's extra work. For what? And then I'll get more into it uh, as we progress. But for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I hope that this, uh, you know, seven or eight minutes I'm up to now hasn't really been a waste of your time, because I, really, I hate ending things that abruptly. Well, anyways, I am Damien. This is Java for Beginners, part of the CPP for Beginners uh, tutorial set. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I would be more than happy to, uh, to take the time to answer all of them. And if you guys are interested in seeing the documentation for this, so you can get a, a little bit better of a handle of the C++ documentation, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to walk you through how to read the documentation. All right, have a nice night, everyone.